آن 1403 تظاهرات هموطنان در برلین و اجلاس جهانی سه روزه ایران آزاد در پاریس نهم تا یازدهم تیر به رغم توته ها و تشبسات و زد و بند های همه جانبه حکومت آخوندی سخنرانی های نیوت گینگریچ رئیس پیشین مجلس نمایندگان آمریکا یوک کالراید عضو کمیسیون خارجی پارلمان استونی آنا النا چکن اچوریا معاون رئیس جمهور کاستاریکا 2014 تا 2018 مونسرات رویس گبارا نماینده پارلمان کاستاریکا کنت بلکویل نماینده پیشین آمریکا در کمیسیون حقوق بشر ملل متحد ریکاردو سرا و سانتوس وزیر امور دریایی پرتغال 2022 سیوم جوان 2024 دهم تیر 1403 Message sent to us from the United States. We will welcome to the former Speaker of the House of Representatives Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich, رئیس پیشین مجلس نمایندگان آمریکا. ما در یک نقطه عطف واقعی قرار داریم. کاملا روشن است که دیکتاتوری دینی تحت فشار فضاینده ای قرار دارد من به عنوان یک همپیمان و حامی قوی باقی خواهم ماند زیرا معتقدم آنچه شما انجام می دهید آینده بهتری برای ایران و بنابراین آینده بهتری برای جهان ایجاد خواهد کرد only 7% of the people in Tehran turned out to vote. Now, when 93% of your potential voters tell you that nothing that's happening matters to them or that they don't believe they have the ability to change any of it, 93% is a pretty high level of isolation. And that's what's happening to the dictatorship in Iran. As it's grown older, as it's grown, I think, much more focused on repression, as it has taken money that could have gone to improving the quality of the lives of the people of Iran and spent that money both on supporting terrorism throughout the Middle East and on supporting a nuclear program that was a real threat both to the world but also a real threat to Iran because it could lead to preemption that would be horrifying. The current dictatorship is increasingly isolated. 
And we see that because of the level of repression they have to go at, uh, the number of young people that they've had to kill, the number of people they put in prison, uh, the brutality of the regime. Uh, and I think we have to recognize that this has been a regime based on brutality. When President Raisi died, some people were quick to rush with their sympathies. Well, let's be clear. He had risen as a torturer. He had risen as a man who was willing to kill, to maim, to mutilate. Uh, he was, in fact, a very deadly person who had helped the regime survive by killing and, and torturing and imprisoning its critics. So we're at an important turning point. I think that uh, the opportunity, and we're seeing more and more people understand this, uh, here in the United States, people who were confused, people who thought there might be a way to appease the dictatorship, I think are gradually, slowly coming to realize that, in fact, this is a dictatorship that has to be replaced, that can't be reformed. The very core of the dictatorship is repression and hostility to the world. When uh, the leaders of the current dictatorship chant death to Israel and death to, uh, the, to America, they mean it. In fact, the Ayatollah Khamenei went on national television and said, when people ask me about death to America, I tell them it is not a slogan, it is a policy. And so I think what's happened is the more open the regime has been, the clearer its ties to terrorism have become, the more we're aware that it's really not a dictatorship you can deal with, the greater the potential for a very dramatic change in American policy. And my personal guess is that after the next election, you're going to see a dramatically tougher approach with a much deeper effort to isolate the regime, uh, to uh, cripple it with sanctions, and to force it into a weakness which will enable the people of Iran to, in fact, create the kind of future for themselves that they want and that they deserve. It's important to remember, we have no conflict with the people of Iran. In fact, I work with many Iranians, and I can tell you that they represent the kind of people who were once liberated from the dictatorship will return Iran to its rightful place as an extraordinarily successful country with enormous natural resources and with a stunning, proud history that goes back for thousands and thousands of years. So it's an honor for me to be able to chat with you, to tell you that I am deeply concerned that my many friends here who understand what's going on are deeply concerned, that you should not despair. You should recognize that while the journey's hard and the challenges are difficult, that in fact freedom will win, dictatorship will lose, the opportunity for individuals to pursue God, to worship in their own right, to have a decent life, will in fact be enacted. And when it does, each of you who are currently involved, each of you, represents the commitment that will make it possible. That's why these kind of meetings are so important. And I want you to know that I will remain a strong ally and a strong supporter, because I do believe what you're doing is going to create a better future for Iran and, therefore, a better future for the world. Thank you for being so committed, and thank you for being so involved. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the pleasure of introducing to you the distinguished delegation from Estonia and Mr. Yuko Kali Rahid, an esteemed member of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Parliament of Estonia, will address us. Let's give them a warm welcome. یوکو کاله راید عضو کمیسیون خارجی پارلمان استونی افتخار می کنم بگویم که دو سوم اعضای پارلمان استونی یعنی بیش از شست نفر بیانیه حمایت از مقاومت ایران را امضا کردند استونی یک کشور کوچک همیشه از مقاومت ایران حمایت می کند Hello, my dear friends. Uh, 
I'll be very short because we have heard so much big words about freedom, about dictatorships, not only one in the world. And isn't it cozy to be here and talk about freedom in free world? Isn't it? Of course it is. I'm glad to be here once again. My first time was here about 11 or 12 years ago. I don't remember it exactly, but the situation in free world was absolutely different. Let me talk straightly. No one understood the threat of Iran regime. Nice to see you, friends, but I'm very sad to be here because we are not holding that meeting in free Iran, in free Tehran, where it should be like our joy gathering when we are all happy. Nope. This is how dictatorship works everywhere. If one of them wins and continues, we all are the losers. Thinking about the word of dictatorship, ship leads you somewhere, takes you somewhere. Dictatorship never does. Let me put that way, this is a dictatorship. And, of course, absolutely. And the tragic, our tragic in free world is that our shoe lies deeply in that shit, in the dictatorship, because we negotiate, we step backwards, and every time we take a step backward, dictatorship takes two steps forward. So, my dear friends, our task is to clean our shoe of that poo, which is called dictatorship. From Estonia, I'm really proud to say that two-thirds of our parliament members, it means more than 60 persons, have signed the statement. And as Estonia, small country supporting now Iran, always, is not presidential, but parliamentary uh, state, it means that two-thirds of whole Estonians are with you and will meet in free Iran. Thank you. Next group of supporters is here from Costa Rica, very much looking forward to hearing from former Vice President of Costa Rica, Her Excellency Ana Helena Chacon Echeverria, and Member of Congress of Costa Rica, Monstrat Ruiz Guevara. Welcome to you and the delegation. آنا الینا چکن اچوریا معاون رئیس جمهور پیشین کاستاریکا زنان ایران باید الهام بخش ما باشند آنها شجاعانه ایستادند و خشونت این رژیم را فاش کردند به همین دلیل است که من از طرح ده ماده مریم رجوی قویا حمایت می کنم As you can see, I am not alone here. Women from all over the world, we are claiming free run. We, we cannot do this alone. 
in the interconnected world, all fights for human rights need to be global. You know that very well. That's why women from all over the world are here supporting the cause of Iranian women in resistance. But we are facing a big and growing enemy, the rise of authoritarianism and nationalist politicians in governments we cannot stand in peaceful international solidarity with this big threat of fascism in the normalization of racism, exclusionary discourse, and policies. We need to stand together with all people that are being repressed, tortured, sexually violated, and held in inhuman prisons by authoritarian governments and their military arms. We need to come together to fight for justice, peace, and the respect of all human rights of marginalized persons. We have to work together to dismay oppressive system that categorizes people, that rejects diversity, that squash dissident. We have to understand that women in Iranian prisons more in common, they have more in common with all other unfairly imprisoned people that they do have with regiments that put them there. I have been in politics for 30 years, and one of the things I've learned is that public policies and laws made and executed by people who think that their personal religions and moral beliefs are above population and well-being are violatory of human rights. Misogyny and religious fundamentalism are positioning societies all around the world. Iran is the prime example of where we could end this up. We permit to continue happening. No, we also, the women of Iran, should be our inspiration. They have stood up bravely and exposed the violence of this regime. This is why I support strongly Marian's 10-point plan. It is imperative to separate religion and state, to build up a new sovereign nation, to disband all representative institutions. We need to stand together in international solidarity. Thank you very much, my dear Marian. We are here standing up for you. Now, with this wonderful woman here, Congresswoman, from three different political parties. So you will see you have majority in our Congress. And four of us together are four different political parties. We are here for Iran. Gracias, gracias. Monserrat Ruiz Guevara, Namayande Parliament of Costa Rica. زن ستیزی و سرکوب زنان در ایران موجب شده است که آنها نه تنها شهروندان دست دوم، سوم یا چهارم باشند بلکه قربانیان رژیمی هستند که از بد به تولد آنها را از ابتدایی ترین حقوق محروم می کنند با شجاعت مرگم رجوی می بینیم که زندگی در آزادی ارزشمند است و باید برای آن مبارزه کنیم به تمامی کسانی که میخواهند به این هدف ارزشمند به پیوندند میگوییم حقوق در کنوانسیون ها و قوانین نوشته می شود اما آنها در خیابان ها به دست آمده اند و محقق می شود como mujeres occidentales que somos y de una de las democracias más consolidadas de América Latina. Un saludo para todas las personas que estamos hoy aquí. Gracias, Marían, por confiar en nosotras y ponernos hoy en un lugar de la historia, de una historia importante para una Irán libre. Y vale decir a todas y todos los que nos encontramos que no solo es un honor el poder acompañarnos en este encuentro, sino que también reúne a muchísimas mujeres del mundo y a muchísimos hombres también. En una causa común, una causa que nos pertenece a todas y todos, como lo es la lucha por la libertad de Irán. 
en el año 2022, la revista Time declaró a todas las mujeres iraníes como heroínas del año. Definitivamente son un ejemplo de lucha, no solo hoy en su país, sino también en todo el mundo. En esta época donde nos corresponde vivir, no solo han sido pocas las fuerzas y actores que nos quieren empujar a las mujeres a un retroceso del oscurantismo, sino que como parte de esta gestión parlamentaria que ejercemos nosotras, mujeres en el poder político, también nos corresponde hoy levantar nuestras causas, nuestras luchas en contra de todas las mujeres acosadas en ese miedo y en esa impunidad de nuestros agresores. Lo más lamentable es que muchos de estos hoy se encuentran también en las esferas políticas y hoy están al mando de estados. Y bueno, la lucha de las mujeres hoy es sinónimo de esperanza, de libertad y de derechos. A lo largo de la historia, nuestra resistencia ha sido en colectivo. Y también hemos demostrado que ante tanta violencia machista, la resistencia es feminista. Así que las mujeres hoy detienen el mundo, pero detienen un mundo para la libertad, para la justicia, para la igualdad, para la equidad. Ninguna sociedad debe darse el lujo de avanzar sin reconocer y garantizar los derechos de las mujeres. En Irán, la misoginia y la subordinación contra las mujeres ha conducido a que no solo sean ciudadanas de segundo, tercero o cuarta categoría. Han sido víctimas de un régimen que se les niega desde su nacimiento, sus derechos más básicos que les corresponden por el hecho de ser mujeres están siendo violentados. Esta violencia despiadada se refleja en una legislación discriminatoria de una participación económica prácticamente inexistente matrimonios forzados y también muchas otras formas de opresión. La historia nos demuestra también que siempre que fuerzas autoritarias y reaccionatorias ante el poder son los derechos de las mujeres los que se ven más sacrificados. Los ejemplos actuales sobran en el mundo, no solo en el régimen iraní, también en Venezuela, en Nicaragua y en muchos otros más. Con la gallardía de nuestra querida Marian, Vemos que vivir en libertad vale la pena y que tenemos que luchar por ella. Desde las mujeres, las niñas, los hombres y todos aquellos que se quieran unir a esta valiosa causa. Los derechos se escriben en las convenciones, en las leyes, pero ante eso fueron conquistados en la calle. Y los derechos de las mujeres no son solo más que derechos humanos. Hoy la resistencia en defensa de la libertad y la justicia, tiene rostro de mujer. Así que hagamos que el mundo se parezca a nosotras. Muchas gracias. Salgamos por acá. Dear guests, it is an absolute privilege now to introduce to you the former U.S. Ambassador to U.N. Human Rights Commission, also former mayor of Cincinnati. Please welcome Mr. Kenneth Blackwell. Kenneth Blackwell. نماینده پیشین آمریکا در کمیسیون حقوق بشر ملل متحد تاریخ یک فرایند است ما با هم قوس تاریخ را به سمت آزادی و یک ایران آزاد تغییر خواهیم داد و با مرکز قدرت شیطانی رژیم ایران مقابله خواهیم کرد مرون particularly those in AFRAF 3. For over 50 years, I've worked on human rights, both domestically and globally. The things that I've witnessed in terms of human tragedy at the hands of dictatorships, authoritarian governments, theocracies, or beyond, most people's imagination. I helped build the case against Milosevic 
in the former Yugoslavia. I've watched the brutality of apartheid in South Africa. This must stop. I have formal remarks that I will give to you because what I want to say comes from my heart and it's to those individuals who are on the front line of this fight for a free Iran. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom fighters all. There are a lot of reports from the United Nations that will go on the ash bin of history if we give up. We happen to be here in this country where the Olympics will be celebrated. There are long distance runners and there are sprinters that burn out quickly. You freedom fighters or long distance runners, you're on the front line, you will make a difference. Iran will be free. Fatwas, mass executions like we witnessed in 1988, holding members of the diaspora guilty in absentia. These are the things of a brutal dictatorship. We are looking forward to a day when we come together and amplify one another. It has often been said that those who would do evil love the darkness. Each and every one of us is invested with a light. We can't hide that light under a bushel. We must use our individual light and our collective light to punch holes in the darkness of our time. History is not a snapshot. History is a process. Together, we will change the arc of history in the direction of freedom and a free Iran. It has often been said that power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. Together, we will confront the evil power center of Iran. We will, in fact, change the regime. We will change the nature of the Bali politic in Iran, and the Iranians will be free. They will continue to create. They will make a difference. And I just say to you, whatever light is still burning on my candle, I will in fact unite it with yours to punch holes in the darkness of an evil regime. We will win. We must win. We will win. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to you now from Portugal, former Minister of Maritime Affairs. Please welcome Mr. Ricardo Sarayo Santos. Ricardo Serrao Santos, وزیر امور دریایی پرتغال 2022 شورای ملی مقاومت ایران به مدت 43 سال به طور فعال علیه رژیم مبارزه کرده است و یک جایگزین دموکراتیک و قابل اتکا را ارائه می دهد. برنامه ده مادهی مریم رجوی نمونه از رهبری قوی و متعهد به اصول دموکراتیک است که نقشه راهی روشن از یک ایران آزاد و دموکراتیک را فراهم می آورد. این در شرایط کنونی چراغ امید است. 
تعهد بی وقفه خانم رجوی به ارزش های دموکراتیک و دیدگاه واضح او برای ایران آزاد و دموکراتیک او را به گزینه مشروع در مقابل رژیم فعلی تبدیل می کند. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Madam Mariam Rajavi, I feel it is important to highlight the critical and urgent situation in Iran, where manipulated elections give the false impressions of democracy. This deception is clear to all, including the regime's international supporters, some of whom are ashamed accomplices. The Iran Iranian regime maintains its power by perpetuating the myth that no alternative exists. This is clearly a narcissist mullah deception. This narrative is powerful challenged by those who are represented here. The National Council of Resistance of Iran has been actively opposing the regime for 43 years, offering a democratic and viable alternative. Marian Rajavi's 10-point plan exemplifies strong leadership and a commitment to democratic principles, providing a clear roadmap of a free and democratic Iran. This is a beacon of hope in the current situation. As someone who hails from Portugal, an acad uh, as an academician who has dedicated part of my active life in politics as a member of the European Parliament first and then a minister in the Portuguese government, I have always valued free thinking, accessible speaking, free press, freedom of religion, freedom of opinion, and freedom of crossing. These fundamental freedoms cherished in academic institutions are suppressed in Iran under a cleric-led regime of mullahs that also impose inexcusable and inadmissible segregation on women. Women in academia in Iran face specific safety and mobility challenges, harassment threats, both within and outside academic uh, settings, create, in fact, a, a, an environment of fear and insecurity. Restrictions on travel and participation in international conference further isolate Iranian human scholars from the global academic uh, community, hindering their professional growth and contribution to global knowledge. The NCRI dedication to, de to gender equality is commendable. Over 60% of its members are women demonstrating the organization's commitment to democratic values. That's make a lot of difference. Mariam Ravage's 10-point plan explicitly promotes full gender equality across political, social, cultural, academic, and economic domains. It ensures women's equal participation in political leadership, eliminates all forms of discrimination, guarantees the right to choose and ensures free access to education and employment. It also bans all forms of exploitation of women. The NARC, led by Mrs. Mariam Rajavi, has been at the front run of resistance against the Iran regime. It is not merely an exilized group, but has consistently fought against the government, taking significant risks to inspire and lead resistance units within Iran. Mrs. Rajavi's unwearing commitment to democratic values and her clear vision for a free and democratic Iran make her the cause, the, the, her cause the legitimate alternative to the current regime. Dear Madam Rajavi, your fight is our fight. It is the fight for freedom and democracy. Thank you very much.